Hi everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are, I'm your host, Dr. Hader Shah. On behalf of Calvas, I would like to welcome all of you to this webinar. Thank you very much for joining us today. We have another very interesting topic, and I'm really honored to welcome and introduce our distinguished guest speaker, who is going to talk about fintech, artificial intelligence, blockchain, digital transformation. In this era of rapid technological advancement and evolving financial landscapes, these interconnected forces are reshaping industries, revolutionizing the business models, and they paving the way for a future characterized by uh, innovation and efficiency. So today we will explore the immense potential and transformative power that emerges uh, from the convergence of fintech, artificial intelligence, blockchain, and digital transformation. So indeed, a very interesting topic, and I'm sure in this session you will learn a lot because we have an expert with us in today's this session. So stay tuned because an amazing stuff are coming ahead in this session. So before we start, I would like to thank Calvas for arranging such enlightening sessions for their support and providing us such a wonderful platform. The aim of Calvas is to give you the opportunity to connect and interact with world-renowned speakers academic leaders, teachers, authors, researchers, experts, professionals, and businessmen to learn from their experiences, recommendations, and suggestions which will create an impact and will enable you to learn and develop yourself in order to grow and transform individually, as well as to contribute to the world in a positive way. As our slogan is, come, learn, and share knowledge. So today we have an amazing person as guest, a person having more than two decades of industry experience, and then he started doing PhD and doing doctorate in academia. A great uh, thing about this man is that he's always ready to support and share his knowledge on various platforms whenever he gets the opportunity. So let me introduce him formally. He has 23 years of experience in the uh, multiple industries, the banking, technology, the airport, oil and gas companies, specializing the digital transformation, fintech, technology management, project management, change management and strategic management. He did his BCS Computer Science India in 1999, MBA UK 2007, and PMP USA 2012, the DBA FinTech Malaysia 2023. His research interests are conducting research, uh, publication, and consultancy. Uh, the context of their research mainly focus on the finance and banking, the FinTech, uh, the uh, blockchain, the artificial and intelligence. Uh, regarding his uh, academic experience, he has multiple working experience like the Sultan Qaboos University as adjunct lecturer, Business Communication College of Banking and Financial Studies adjunct lecturer, uh, Organizational Behavior, Entrepreneurship and Innovation and Business Communication, Muscat University as adjunct lecturer, Supply Chain, Business Introduction and Project Management. Along with that, uh, he evaluated the fintech syllabus for the University of uh, Technology and Applied Sciences, Oman, 2022 to 2023. He attended multiple conferences in Malaysia, India, etc., and conducted multiple workshops on fintech ecosystem workshop. The fintech credit platform received risk, uh, perceived risks, and the facets of and factors for university as well as for the banking industry. Last but not the least, he's a wonderful speaker, author, teacher, researcher, professional, and above everything, a great human being. So please help me in welcoming our guest, Dr. Hatim Daud Al Dawati. Welcome to the Carlos platform, and thank you very much for joining us, dear doctor. Thank you, Dr. Haider. It's my pleasure to meet you all on this platform. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, a soft reminder to the audience that uh, uh, Dr. Hatim will be presenting and he would leave time for question answer session at the end of the session. If you have any question, you can write in comment section or you can email us at info at the of So over to you, dear doctor. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Hatim Dawood. Inshallah, today I'm going to talk about financial technology. Uh, I try my best to summary my knowledge in these slides. Um, so today, inshallah, we'll uh, discuss about financial technology, then its objectives, business models, and what are these uh, technologies used in fintech. Then we'll highlight the application of AI 
and blockchain in fintech. And finally, we'll discuss something about in summary about the uh, fintech uh, risks. Um, so uh, uh, I will start with the features between uh, the traditional banking uh, services or digital banking and fintech. First of all, um, I hope everything is clear on the screen, right? So uh, first of all, electronic yes, safe. Yes, uh, please go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so. Um, in digital banking or services banking, which is not fintech, it is about electronic services. It's not a business model. Business model is a complete uh, business where starting from uh, planning, strategies, from A to Z, everything in that model. In, uh, in fintech, uh, actually, it is a specific business model. It's not about services like uh, money transfer or, no, it's a complete one. Once you fill the form, the transactions will go from front or the mobile interface to the destination immediately. Second thing that um, uh, banking, uh, digital banking or electronic service in, in the banks or mobile banks are partially automated, while in fintech, in most of cases, are fully automated processes. Uh, in fintech, they are using traditional technologies like ABIs, normal uh, coding, programming languages, uh, while in fintech they are using advanced technologies and will get introduced in the coming slides. Uh, also in, in, in digital bank banking, transactions cost remains high, uh, while in fintech it's supposed to be less or less than uh, normal traditional fees or, char or cost. Um, also in uh, digital banking, transactions require back office like middleman or intermediaries to approve the transactions or a back office admin. While in fintech, there is no in, uh, middleman, no back office work. For example, if you add a beneficiary in mobile app, normal mobile app, it takes maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes to get approved. And then you can transfer money to him. While in fintech, immediately, because they are using blockchain. Also, uh, there's a security concern, always batches, always an issue because it's, it is central database, central, all APIs goes to central database. So the risk is, is little more high here in, in digital banking. While in FinTech, the security is high uh, because they are using blockchain and AI. And I will also explain this area, inshallah, in the coming slides. Normally, digital banks or digital mobile application developed by banks, while fintech is purely SMEs. It is not banks because uh, banks usually they are under regulation of central bank or traditional regulations, what we call it. While uh, fintech, it's normally uh, regulated by innovation authority and they have realistic uh, regulation. So by these features, we come to know or it's clear what's the difference between digital mobile application or electronic services and between uh, between them and between the fintech now uh, mainly the objectives uh, this is very important to know that what what are these objectives fintech uh, is aiming and uh, fintech innovations for example these are view of them like lower financial transaction cost so in terms of remittance for example if you are transferring with 20 rupees uh, money transfer from Pakistan to Philippine, in FinTech maybe it will cost five rupees or two rupees or three rupees because there are no middlemen. And uh, of course, eliminating middlemen or uh, intermediaries create more jobs because innovations will create companies and growth, economic growth, financial inclusion because banks has certain regulations, they can expand only physically by by developing or establishing branches uh, while uh, fintech it is all mobile app it, it seems to be like new banks new banking uh, in in fintech they boost the innovations they try they have sandbox and they put these innovations monitor these innovation deviations of these innovations in order to make it more solid and monitoring and control the financial transactions uh, of course, the fintech gives more uh, safe and faster transactions, as I give an example of uh, adding a beneficiary in mobile apps. If the mobile apps does not use blockchain, then it will take 15 minutes. That means middleman. 
while uh, if in fintech it will immediately transfer the amounts to destination of course the fintech will improve economic uh, uh, diversifications a lot of innovations a lot of business models and actually uh, fintech uh, they are representing some business models or taking these business models from banks and doing it more in easy and faster innovations uh, business model there are many many types of business models in, uh, in fintech actually uh, i have uh, i and uh, my doc my uh, co-authors dr louis and dr marcia we have conducted uh, certain research and we found uh, uh, this kind of classifications for uh, fintech business models it is divided into horizontal and vertical horizontal also divided into functional and technologies functional means related to financial industry or banking like regulations uh, they introduce some uh, new ideas using high advanced software soft uh, advanced technologies in the regulations and the risk management kyc know your customer and the money laundry funding valuation evaluations and technological wise it is like implementing these flat, uh, these technologies into certain applications for example uh, uh recognitions uh, face recognitions for example in mobile applications or in mobile banking uh, iot big data and etc while vertical model it is actually it's about pure business it's payments where now you can transfer payments without banks you can get lens or crowd fund funding without banks you can have wealth management advisory without banks and similarly for insurance and retails property furthermore we can uh, we, we have uh, found that vertical business model for example i took payment it is divided also to subcategory like qr payments more um, uh, m pose mobile pose uh, where you can just contact less your mobile to pose machine and money will be transferred to the retailer e-wallet mobile payments through mobile mo your mobile number or whatever there are two three i three uh, three concepts in this uh, sub model contactless which we cut uh, everyone now using contactless since covid and uh, for uh, credit for example we have lending crowdfunding agency lending balance sheet lending different business models different approaches in different countries they use different uh, ways and uh, crowdfunding itself there are around 10 sub business models like equity base reward base lending base etc so this is all business models which are now in the market in the research they discuss all these type of business uh, models of fintech uh, technologies which are used and implemented in fintech uh, cloud computing uh, blockchain which has significant contribution to fintech machine learning artificial intelligence these three plays significant roles now these days in in fintech internet of things also big data is important for ai and machine learning and of course the mobile technology now becomes now it is it's replacing computers and tablets uh, they, they, we have digital native native which they are using mobile all the time and uh, like uh, grabs or uh, or uh, talabat in, in in gulf here uh, they are using it for food and for for all, for ordering things and items now uh, here are some applications of artificial intelligence where we can use ai in fintech for example fraud detections and prevention by analyzing large volume of data in real time to uh, detect patterns uh, that indicates uh, fraudulent similarly for risk assessment and uh, uh, chatbot now the, some banks in us in uk uh, denmark swiss australia singapore they start using uh, ai chatbot inside mobile application where you give instructions by voice to transfer money to do to execute some financial transactions without writing and uh, in uh, Amer uh, bank of america uh, they they call it uh, erica uh, it's it's a product called erica embedded inside mobile applications also there's uh, also there's an application for robo advice advisors where they advise you for for your portfolio for your uh, wealth management credit scoring also they are using ais to detect uh, uh, 
uh, your uh, to, to evaluate your scoring for lending for crowdfunding also in in reading human human language they are using nlb and machine language regulatory compliance we mentioned this in in, uh, in early slides uh, also personalized financial services and uh, finally market analysis and prediction they see where the market is going or heading several uh, in terms of products in terms of uh, of uh, uh, customer requirements and etc uh, blockchain also is contributing as everyone knows about cryptocurrency ethereum and bitcoin now also in trade of finance in banking sector they start using smart contracts which is basically blockchain and um, a blockchain is gives more security more reliability you don't need a traditional uh, legacy integration between the systems which has which is hassle and uh, costly now if you use uh, private blockchain you can do that easily in a country or among the banks uh, of course also cross border payments like saudi arabia and uh, ksa and uae they they uh, they actually implemented uh, cross border payments certain products they can uh, pay through cryptocurrency some kind of cross uh, cross border payments remittance also they start using blockchain for faster uh, and uh, cheaper uh, money transfer identity verifications it, it is very secure uh, blockchain uh, the technicals they know that uh, it is hard to change the data inside the block once it is uh, added uh, insurance also in fraud prevention or maybe health insurance also they can use to for customer profile crowdfunding and peer-to-peer -peer lending um, uh, assist uh, technization these all some of or few of uh, implementation of blockchain in financial industry uh, of course uh, every every beauty there is some some attached or associated risk uh, fintech uh, uh, is not free of risk there is a financial uh, risk there is operational risk legal risk security risk and especially uh, there is uh, information asymmetric uh, risk for example in financial risk there is um, uh, it could be happened due to fraud or error uh, due to financial transactions malfunction moral hazard transaction fees similarly for operations maybe the applications uh, failure employees failure system failure and for legal maybe some countries like uh, gcc is still in you and they are developing the legal as as as, as a process of uh, understanding the ecosystem and uh, trying uh, trail and error practice uh, security everything you know uh, we cannot uh, assume everything is secured unless it's a proof that it's secure so uh, yes it is it is much better uh, secured fintech secured uh, when using uh, blockchain however still there is uh, concern about uh, uh, the data privacy where this data since it's stored in cloud where this data who are authorized to access this data it's not under your control it's not like a data center where everything on site or uh, on servers uh, in, in the premises uh, overall risk uh, of course if it is not classified one of these four then it's called overall risk uh, this is uh, what i have uh, selected for you i hope uh, it was uh, short and beneficial so you are welcome for any question. Yes, Dr. Hatim Dawood, thank you very much for such a wonderful presentation. Uh, yes, indeed, it was very brief and precise, but it contained a lot of information. And I love your uh, these wonderful slides uh, contain a lot of information. And I love the way you just started with the wonderful distinction that first we need to understand the uh, financial technology and the role of the blockchain and how it is different <coughs> from the simple banking industry and loved by the way you talked about the uh, objectives of the fintech and then i really enjoyed this business model of the uh, fintech which is actually a uh, vertical and horizontal and what are the different types within the horizontal and uh, vertical uh, the basic purpose of this session was to give the orientation to the our audience from around the globe to understand what is the distinction between the 
fintech, blockchain, and uh, what are the different financial technologies and how do we differentiate them? Because for a, a beginner researcher particularly, they don't know and they take a lot of time to differentiate between uh, the what is the uh, blockchain, artificial intelligence and fintech and how can they differentiate it and what are the different definitions for that purpose. So you made it very easy for our audience. Thank you very much. And uh, it was very nice and very great. And we have a lot received a lot of uh, questions regarding, you know, it's the hot topic, but you are the expert. You did a PhD in it and doctorate. So definitely you are the best person to ask these questions. And we will definitely have your thoughts on those questions. I think these questions are very pertinent and uh, they, they are looking for the expert opinion on that. So should we start with the first question, please? Yes, please. Yes, please. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. So the first question they I want to ask that uh, thank you very much, dear Dr. Uh, Hatim, for your wonderful presentation. Uh, I would like to ask the question regarding the ethical consideration. So please uh, share your opinion that uh, what are the ethical and regulatory considerations associated with the adoption of fintech, I, uh, international, uh, the uh, AI, the uh, blockchain, and digital transformation? And how can organizations navigate them effectively? Yes, please. Yes, thank you very much. Um, uh, in terms of ethical aspects uh, regarding these technologies, uh, actually, uh, mainly is uh, about uh, regulation formulations. And uh, every country or every area where they need to establish um, a regulatory uh, framework um, otherwise it is actually yes uh, it's it is dangerous it can impact the financial stability uh, uh, because the data is stored on cloud different clouds for example in oman we have strict uh, regulations that all data sensitive data must be in the local cloud solutions which provided inside the country and there is, of course, uh, monitoring uh, regarding to that. And there's very restricted rules. Uh, yes, um, uh, any, any information leaks can be misused, especially outside the country. And of course, uh, you know, um, uh, cloud is the main, actually the main, uh, 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 what you call it, leakage or the source of leak leaking the information if it is not handled very well not known very well. There are now several cloud solutions around the world. Uh, so we should be uh, careful in terms of getting all this information because uh, also FinTech takes some information which is you cannot sense through the mobile. For example, your location, your uh, device ID, your time, your uh, maybe movement from location to location. All this information, maybe it, it, it can be transmitted and stored in, in, in data cloud. Uh, plus your uh, personal information, your address, your contact. Uh, so uh, actually clouds a little bit represent some kind of uh, uh, puppet for, I would say. And only things here to handle these uh, uh, technologies is only by regulations. Ethical is, is coming from awareness where people should know, aware how this information uh, uh, can impact uh, people, society. Uh, yes, the awareness is important. Uh, till now, people uh, uh, shares their uh, pin codes and secret passwords with the, with the any calls by by good mean, by good good intent. So, uh, if if we come to fintech, which is more more uh, sensitive, uh, yes, it, it can be impact. That's, that's why I think uh, the ethical here is uh, awareness in schools, in, uh, in uh, universities, uh, to, to, to teach people what's the side impact of, of the, these technologies uh, so that we can aware and we can handle it. Yeah, wow, thank you very much. What a great answer and illustration. And very nicely you have quoted the multiple countries, including the Oman, how the security uh, and regulation uh, regulatory bodies can play important role to ensure all these things are happening within the boundaries of the legalities and ethical considerations. Thank you. 
And now there is one another interesting question, and they want to ask that, uh, uh, dear sir, please would you like to uh, illustrate us in the context of uh, digital transformation? What are the critical success factors for organization looking to embark the, uh, on a digital transformation journey? So, what in your opinion, what are the critical success factors for any organization? Yes, please. Okay. Uh first of all digital transformation uh, i think also there's a misconception between digitalization and digitization uh, uh, i met many people they are mixing these two concepts and they are conducting big or mega projects assuming that this is digitalization but in fact it's digitization digitization is where you convert the manual work to automation it's about process re-engineering it's about to make things from manual to computerized while digitalization actually it's a full a new concept of uh, business for example before uh, like fintech fintech is a full business model before i used to go bank and get loan i did not have any other source now there's a new concept a new business model where you can go to a mobile app ask for loan and within two or three days you get that loan so it's a, a new idea it's used two side market mobile any mobile called uh, any business through mobile is called two-sided market where you bring the funder the lender who has money and the borrower and you create this platform they can meet and sell to each other negotiate and get the deal so for example peer-to-peer -peer lending uh, platforms we get banks financial institutions and we get borrowers who needs this fund they apply uh, through the platform mobile app for example example or tablet app or web-based portal and then this uh, proposal goes to all these financial institutions uh, in order to accept anyone accepts before or in advance they will get this deal they can also uh, uh, embark or impose higher interest rate because this is innovation it's not under central bank while in bank they cannot uh, impose higher rate for example or accept higher risk persons while in peer-to-peer -peer lending for example they can accept now uh, in order so this is like what is the difference between digitalization and digitization now uh, come back to your questions what factors to succeed digital tra uh, digital transformation projects actually there are four or five important aspects one of them you should have uh, projects management this is a one drive or one wheel second strategic management third is uh, about technology management How, what kind of of uh, technology you are going to use uh, and uh, third fourth which is very important and many people missing it is change management these four driving the uh, transformations in any organizations and mainly why mainly uh, it is more uh, applicable the digital transformation in private sector government is still it is in digitization uh, format so uh, these fa four factors are very important to make the digital transformation success you should have a person who wow. or group of people who knows these four pillars strategic digital uh, strategic technology change and projects management wow. wonderful wonderful and uh, thank you very much for uh, such a wonderful elaboration and uh, you have very nicely incorporated your own uh, knowledge and experiences to it as well since yes. uh, you have a wonderful more than two years two decades decades of experience of the industry and then the academia as well so uh, since you are the expert of change management as well that's why you have uh, mentioned particularly that the uh, change management and the strategic management is very important pillars which needs yes. to be considered for digital transformation thank you i'm really enjoying the way you are giving answer what wonderful answer you are giving and now another question they want to ask uh, which is relevant to the first question and they they are uh, thanking you for giving such a wonderful answer for the first question they said that uh, dear sir you have given answer in a wonderful way for ethical and regulatory consideration but uh, would you like to share with us that how do you see the role of the organization in ensuring the security and convenience for 
user when they are using the digital uh, platforms, particularly digital payments. Your uh, opinion on that? Yes, yes, please. Okay, actually, uh, here uh, practically to to say uh, in the industry where I worked, uh, um, uh, organization normally, um, if it is not government, it's, it's private sector. It's uh, normally losing this uh, uh, ethical and regulation of uh, of the the uh, implementing digital transformations because know and how the knowledge of know and how are missing, uh, especially in in middle and small size companies. Of course, I'm not talking about uh, big companies, large companies. They have the professionalism. They have the uh, the manpower who is, who are very experienced in this, so that's no issue. But uh, in in middle companies, with what I have seen and observed in the market, middle middle companies and below, which I have worked, there are, yes, there are lag of uh, the knowledge and know how where to implement, how to implement. For that reasons, many of their tra digital transformation projects costly, and uh, they were repeated in two, three, four years, and uh, coming four years because it will not fit their requirements. For the government in Oman, for example, they all go under regulations. Uh, they cannot deviate because there's very strict regulations. We have many regulators. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, national defense for data protections. We have uh, central bank regulator. We have capital market regulator. We have ministry, of, uh, a complete ministry of technology where they also observe the technology implementation in government. So I'm, I'm not worried about uh, government. I'm worried about the middle and small companies, which they, they are lacking this. Uh, the role, as, as I said, uh, uh, maybe we are in the Middle East. Uh, the role should be effective by regulations. Regulation, the only way to make that ethical and that uh, um, the, the, the security, the privacy, the protections given to human, his, his personal information uh, can give uh, 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 importance to it. Otherwise, uh, middle company and small companies, they are suffering. And this is because also the, the know-how or the knowledge, lack of knowledge. So uh, in, in my, my point of view, uh, I think the regulations can impose the ethics. It's not like the academic where no there are journals there are publications there are supervisors there are many people will check your work uh, in, in in industry is different totally is different yeah thank you very much and uh, thank you for giving us the double side of the coin perspective that uh, what the industry they do and what the academician they do because since you have a wonderful experiences of both so that's why you are bridging the gap between the industry and the academia and you are uh, uh, sharing with us that what should be done appropriately and how can we further develop this sector in a good way. Uh, thank you. And now uh, another very interesting question they want to ask that, uh, dear sir, would you like to share with us that what, uh, what kind of challenges and opportunities do you see as an expert that are associated with implementing the machine learning models in the financial industry, particularly in the areas such as uh, credit scoring, fraud detection, and investment prediction. So how do you see it? Yes, please. Yes, actually, um, uh, actually today was, was with one of colleagues and we were discussing machine language. You know, um, uh, artificial intelligence and machine language it's not like a product where you can develop it fast and implement it, uh, or it's uh, easy implementation. It's actually uh, from the name, machine learning. It learns about your skills. Maybe our society in Oman different than Pakistan, India, Malaysia, whatever. So uh, here it's actually reads the human behavior, how he behaves, where he buys, where he sells, how he save money, where he spend, on what he spend. He's going to restaurants every week, two times, one time. Uh, all these informations needs to be um, um, uh, collected and gathered in, in, in a schema called big data. And only this machine learning where they learn, it's called learning. So this machine learns the human behavior. Based on that, uh, artificial intelligence can, can be implemented. Artificial intelligence, actually two types. One is based on data 
big data and one based on technology uh, where for example face detections or chatbot the uh, chatbot is technology or maybe you log in your uh, application through uh, stamp a finger a fingerprint or oh, this is called technology driven iai by technology driven or you can uh, uh, now you know bkis or uh, identification through your card your mobile now you can uh, they identify you by face uh, for example this is ai based on technology other type is based on your data your behavior so for example credit card uh, scoring uh with with collecting uh all this data about you about your behavior you go to this bank and have loan you go to that financial institutes you have loan maybe you have case in the court you have all this information when it comes in big data the machine learning can detect you uh, easily your uh, credit scoring uh, uh so for that reason uh, there's a big potential big potential uh implementing i think these days or the coming future is only about ai and blockchain Bo both they have uh, they are good combinations the only challenge in this is we have to give time proof of concept is important um like for example ai chatbot in mobile applications now in america is there different countries but this comes after 5 10 years exercise so uh, if i put it in oman mobile banking in any bank here they need to learn about How, what's our accents how is our accent our behavior our community so that when we speak because in arabic uh, one word uh, maybe it has two meanings or one meaning it has two words so uh, so it needs to learn till it becomes to maturity and then you will launch it so so that's the challenge it's the time when, when we speak about data driven in in in, in banking similarly for money laundering Uh, they can detect this easily before it was central database central application in each bank and each bank reports to central bank about behavior of certain people now no artificial intelligence and through blockchain they they can know more in depth the source of money and how it is melt in the market so so uh, yes big potential inshallah i think in, uh, for these two fields yeah wow wonderful uh... Thank you very much for again wonderful elaboration. You have done it, and uh, that brings me to the last question, which is uh, you have already touched, uh, but now uh, we would like to have your complete answer on this question. Uh, there is a one question from the uh, beginner researcher, and they were, are looking for your advice regarding the research. They want to ask that. Uh, uh dr hatim please can you guide us regarding the what are the latest topics are uh, what are the latest things happening in terms of the artificial intelligence fintech because we are about to conduct a new research so please guide us in that direction and then second my uh, part of my question is uh, uh what the future hold for us if we go in the fintech research since you have the industry experience as well as the academic so please guide our young researchers regarding this very important aspect just please okay thank you very good and vital uh, question uh, for the research i think uh, ai is trending now uh, i read some articles it's boost uh, in the research domain about ai uh, i would uh, suggest that if it is not from computer background if it is from computer background then go for machine learning in understanding or implementing a human for example now in us there is uh, many there are many research in breast cancer detected by ai for example so uh, if you are from science background uh, such these uh, domains where there's implementation in medicine in 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 science in anatomy in, in there are a lot of actually aspects of ai while in business uh, i i would suggest to have some kind of Uh, uh psychology or behavior with ai this is very important because it will help uh, ai uh, innovations to understand more about the human uh, human in pakistan is different than human in in in, in oman in uh, other countries in terms of behavior in terms of perception uh, of course we are not one type of human we are many types so uh, this is this kind of uh, research will of course it will 
contribute in uh, practically and theoretically. Um, this is my suggestions in terms of AI. In terms of fintech research, uh, uh, now I think it's time to go uh, much deeper in fintech. I have uh, shown and presented more than 23 business models today. They are different, different. I will tell you one thing, for example, agency lending. No one touch. We have done a systematic literature review and we found zero articles in it. There, there is no research in uh, agency lending. The agency lending means the platform is not get a, getting to side markets. The, the platform itself get loan from bank and give it to people. So this is, has impact also. We need to understand how it works or what's the impact, how the people will involve, influence, etc. For example, balance sheet lending, also no, no studies in this. There, there are some practical applications, but in terms of research, it's not touch area. Uh, similarly for wealth management, wealth robo advisor, advisory in, in wealth management. This is also uh, needs a lot of research. Um, you know, banks, they have a sector or branch or unit called wealth management. They suggest for people or for customers where to invest. It's actually based on their readings. But now AI has also a role in this because it can collect all the information from social media and it can uh, it has that capacity to get all this big data from companies, from markets and tell you more precise and concise uh, uh, wealth management decision. Uh, uh, I feel uh, also uh, insure tech or insurance technology. Also, we have missing in the research, very less literature. This is also a non-touch area. Insurance is important, is one of uh, pillars in financial industry, uh, like health insurance, for example. Uh, how it is, it, it's very complex. As you know, uh, US, you, many countries suffering from health insurance. And some of them, they, they are uh, implementing unified health insurance system. So how people interact with this, how providers, uh, med medical care, health care, uh, payers, insurance companies uh, deal with this, uh, or their perceptions, or their uh, what they are, how they, we can influence them to adopt these solutions. Whether it has impact on quality of health, uh, health and health uh, care. So a lot of things we can implement, uh, we can uh, do our research in fintech. But uh, before we in last five years, or let's say before five years, fintech was very top general uh, concept. Um, last three, four years, it becomes more deep. Some of them, they discussed about payments, some of them lending. And of course, payments is also is, is very trending now, payments mode, because we have shifted from cash to check to card ATM. Now it is contactless. Now something to replace contactless which is qr payment mobile payment impose payment e-wallet actually many banks has implemented e-wallet but very few people used e-wallet is it from a human or it is from retail who does not have that awareness or that product to enable it in their shop or their company to receive uh, the e-wallet transactions so this kind of uh, i think research uh, uh, are welcoming in, 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 in fintech context. Wow, wonderful. Yeah. Uh, really, uh, so many wonderful suggestions you have uh, given. And I think you are very right in that perspective that uh, for five years back, the uh, fintech was considered something different, very journal. But now we have narrowed it down to the uh, particular uh, subject and now we are further investigating it and very nicely you have talked about that in artificial intelligence we have to see the technological aspect which is very important at the same time the big data in which you have quoted very nicely the behavioral sciences and how can we understand the psychology the uh, behavior of the consumer and so many things and uh, you have highlighted where there is a systematic literature review uh, a, a lake of the studies and I think these are the uh, suggestions and advices that uh, the, our audience from around the globe they are looking for because uh, you have gone through extensive literature review in your doctorate so you know where, where are the gray areas where are the things which needs to be uh, researched and particularly the PhD kind of research where we give a lot of 
uh, attention and where we consider a lot of KPIs to meet and to have a contribution back to the society in terms of theoretical as well as the managerial implication. So you have highlighted wonderful areas where they can consider and where they can uh, start uh, even uh, conducting a literature review in order to dig further regarding that. And I think that's the beauty of the expert that they always pave the way for the people to understand and make things easy for them to understand and uh, to help them uh, towards the better guidance. Thank you very much, Dr. Hatim, for such a Thank wonderful you. suggestion. And I really enjoyed this session with you. You're Thank a wonderful you. expert. And uh, thoroughly, I would say that the way you just uh, uh, prepared your slides uh, uh, initially, it was looking that it, it contains a very few information, but once you were explaining each and everything, then uh, uh, we got the idea that how uh, wonderful content it is, uh, because the way you were explaining was so great, and it was so, uh, at the same time, simple, but not easy, easy in a sense to get the idea what is happening, and now they, they their job is to take it further to understand it. And uh, sure. uh, Dr. Hatim, we, uh, at the end of the session, we ask our each guest regarding their message to the world. So what is your message to the world as a speaker, author, teacher, researcher, trainer, learner, professional, and educator? Yes, please. Yeah, I think uh, uh, we said uh, in Arabic, means the nations raised by science, by knowledge. So my recommendation is just to keep the, doing research and uh, yes, spend on research because research will contribute to the development of any country. Yeah, wow, wonderful. What a powerful message you have given to the world. Even yesterday, uh, we had a session with uh, Prof. Melissa uh, from Italy and she was uh, giving the same kind of message that education is the tool through which we can change the world. And she was referring towards the Nelson Mandela quotation. And uh, they, uh, they say that uh, great minds think alike. So your message is also similar, which is spreading the education and through education, we can bring positive change to the world. And this is our slogan as well, that come learn and share knowledge. So we are on the same mission of spreading knowledge. And because we know that knowledge is something which will make this world much better uh, for upcoming generation because we have the global citizenship and we should be caring for society, for the community, for the globe as a whole. So thank you very much. And uh, to the audience that uh, please do follow our distinguished guest speaker through his research work and you can email him for future learning and sure. guidance. He is very generous and always ready to help the people. Moreover, wonderful explanation and powerful content which the great speaker has already elaborated will help you to learn and develop your understanding regarding the fintech. So that's all we have time for today. And thank you once again, Dr. Hatim Dawood, for thank your you precious much. time accepting our invitation. It was indeed a pleasure thank to have you with us. Yeah, thank you. And uh, thank you, uh, uh, yeah, I would like to thank our audience who joined us. If you have any additional questions about information shared today, Please email us or connect to the speaker directly through his email or social media account. So thank you all for your support and liking our session. Stay tuned as many sessions are on the way. Please do not miss any session until next session.